Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is January 12th, and right now we're looking at the infrared satellite imagery. You can see the strong storm going up towards western Alaska as we speak. And of course, that is causing some downstream ridging here, bringing us some dry conditions here across the Pacific Northwest. At least through the short term, we're going to take a look at what is to come. we got some Arctic air that will be on the move. How much of that will clip the Pacific Northwest? We will take a look at that. Some details we go through the video today. We'll also take a look at some other fun stuff as far as climatology is concerned. And uh, we'll take a look at La Nina and what I think is going on with that here starting in a moment. But first, again, at the visible satellite, even a little bit of sunshine out there. Look at the push, a little bit of sun, some off and on sun for the Oregon coast, breaking out a little bit there for some eastern Washington, Oregon as well. Some of the east slopes of Oregon getting a little bit of sunshine. Check it out. Maybe some sun for you in Boise, Idaho, some of Treasure Valley. But you see across a lot of the panhandle, some of the low clouds really locked in there. And you see some of the upper level clouds moving across some of the low clouds there across Alberta and Montana as well, eastern British Columbia. But you can also see some of the snow-capped mountains there across British Columbia also. So there's always a little bit of hope, you know, depending on where you are, if you're going to get some of that sunshine today. Now, taking a look here, don't shoot the messenger, but check it out on climate.gov if you want to remain up to date and educated with the latest warmest year for the modern record on the planet was 2024 you guessed it 2023 was the previous warmest year there so you can kind of see that trend there but anyway if you want to remain up to date with this information check out climate.gov for the latest now i get a lot of questions on which weather station i recommend well this smartphone app is great for the tempest weather system you can click on the link down below to save 10 percent off on that and what i am doing is i put it on my highest pull and i'm comparing it to the davis three cup trying to get a good reading on just how accurate this ultrasonic anemometer is and you can see the solar panels you got to face those south there for the best exposure to keep your station powered when we get pretty gloomy here in the winter months but taking a look here so far today 8.7 it came at in at right around 1 a.m on the tempest so the davis three cup here checking in at eight miles per hour a very similar time there and the ultrasonic had seven miles per hour which is a lower location there but i'll be comparing this it's fun to do when things are a bit slow as they are right now now, look at the North American model. There still are some showers across, you know, Montana, Yellowstone, and whatnot, and maybe a little bit of very light precipitation across some of the higher terrain, but not much to write home about and not much going on over the next 60 hours. But we'll be taking a look at what is yet to come here in a moment, so bear with me. But first things first, I want to take a look at what is probably going on with La Nina. So La Nina is characterized by the strong jet stream coming off of Asia because you got the warm water buildup here. you got stronger trades across Pacific, allows for that warmer water to bunch up across the western pacific and you create a stronger jet stream because of course siberia and a lot of russia is cold so you have that temperature gradient and what happens is you have that stronger jet stream you bring some ridging here and you can kind of see this pattern that is there the issue is is that for us right now is the ridging is just a little bit too far off to the east if this were to back up to the west of course that allows for that northwest flow and the north flow to bring some colder air into the region so it does resemble a la nina pattern but the ridging just again a little bit too far to the east the big question is as we go through the later portion of january and on in through february is will this ridging back up enough to allow for the cooler air to get back down into western canada and potentially into the pacific northwest the models the extended models continue to show this to be a possibility in some cooler than normal weather as we go on in through february However, it has been showing in the shorter range some of that trying to get down into the Pacific Northwest as well, and then it backs off on it. So it's kind of, you know, it's, it's Lucy and Charlie Brown here holding the football, and then Charlie Brown runs up to kick it, and she pulls it away. So that's kind of what we've been dealing with here over the last couple of weeks. Granted, uh, these solutions have been far off into the forecast. But if we take a look at the 12Z run on the Europeans, so we have some systems moving in mainly north of Vancouver Island. This low pressure system is kind of interacting with that Arctic front that starts to move down across portions. You can see it does bring some snow for the Rocky Mountains and whatnot, but not much in the way of precipitation at all into uh, Washington. Some of British Columbia getting clipped a little bit at times, but you can see we're going up over 10 days now, and you didn't see much meaningful precipitation. We continue to scroll out and then maybe something's showing up way off into the extended forecast here but you saw that not much precipitation scheduled here we're kind of caught in between with this ridging here over the pacific northwest if we take a look at the european hot off the presses <coughs> excuse me GFS is on the right. So we're looking at 8,000 feet. Shows you that Arctic air and its movement quite nicely. But uh, we've got the ridging out here. 
uh, we're dealing with in the meantime. But then you see the Arctic air and the northwest flow start to move down across the region. Both models have it. Both models keeping the bulk of it off to the east of the Rocky Mountains. The GFS again on the right, European on the left. The European, the secondary swipe kind of allows more of that to leak out into eastern Washington, Oregon, Idaho, western Montana versus the GFS, as you can see. And then it drops some of that down to the Great Basin. The GFS, lesser with that, keeps the Arctic air off to the east there. So right now, this looks like a dry pattern with some chilly overnight lows. But again, there could be some nice sunshine in there at times as well. And hopefully we don't fog up too much there. That's one of my least favorite weather events is long-term long fog. But you can see some of that colder air leaking out into some of the lower elevations, but not much in the way of the Pacific Storm Train getting back into the Pacific Northwest anywhere in the two-week period. We'll continue to break that down day by day. And then the, at the end of the model runs, they continue to want to show more Arctic air moving around across maybe some of central and western Canada. But again, it's just not anything that you want to get caught up. It's not very reliable at that uh, time frame. So if we look at two meter temperature in Celsius, now when you see the white line, that is the freezing line here. So uh, if you look at Celsius, it kind of makes that easier. You can make the easy transition from zero to 32 Fahrenheit. And you can see as we go on in through the end of the week, you can see the diurnal and the nocturnal cycle. But then as we go on towards the weekend, you can see some of these chilly overnight lows you know, dropping below freezing here, but nothing too crazy. Nothing really you would have to cover your pipes for west, maybe east of the mountains there. And you can see the cooler air there across some of the inner mountain west on the European model. But again, just kind of a clip and some of that colder air leaking out into the you know, portions mainly east of the Cascades here, but largely that Arctic air mass stays east of the Rocky Mountains, and we do not get the big Arctic blast at least this round. Now, if we look at Bellingham, uh, take a look here. You can see, you know, these are there's some chilly overnight lows in here and whatnot. This is a six hour minimum temperature, but again, this is nothing bone chilling or anything of that nature by any stretch of the imagination. However, Spokane, you can see this is temperature in Fahrenheit. You do see there are some single digits in some of these as well. So we will watch for some of that cooler air leaking into places east of the Cascades mainly as we go on in towards the upcoming weekend. And avalanche.org, remember to check before you go across the backcountry. Just because it's not snowing now does not mean there is not avalanche danger across the higher terrain. Here's the 6 to 10 day issued yesterday through January 21st. And again, there's that Arctic air, but you know, this is not a temperature forecast. This is strictly the percentages of being below normal. So this doesn't tell you that you're going to be really cold just because you see the darker blues showing up. This is just an overall uh, Climate Prediction Center look at which areas are likely to be above or below normal temperature wise. Same thing for precipitation as we go through the 21st, strong below normal signal, 8 to 14, 8 and day again, a nice Arctic air mass. So high chances of being below normal there across a lot of the center portions of the country east of the Rocky Mountains, especially 8 to 14 day there, also below normal signal there for the West. So if we take a look at the weeklies on the European extended now, you remember me talking about that strong jet stream coming off of uh, Asia over there and uh, then allowing for some ridging downstream. But the problem, again, the ridging too close to the Pacific Northwest to allow for that colder air to start to mix up and bring some interesting systems here for the Pacific Northwest. So we scroll off into the future and there would be some of that Arctic air moving off to the east. The ridge still too close. But as we go towards the end of January, notice the ridge start to back up. The ridge axis backs up a little bit here. And as we go towards the end, you can see some of the below normal heights here at 18,000 feet start to creep into Western Canada and the Pacific Northwest. So that's a La Nina look as well. But as you can see, the ridge axis has just shifted a little bit to the west or more than a little bit here, but it's out towards the Aleutian Islands. And then you can see we would get some of that troughing here and Pacific North American negative oscillation, kind of a classic La Nina pattern as we go on into February. So there are still chances here. Snow lovers into the lower elevations, you know, don't give up hope just yet. And, it, and actually, let me back that up a little bit here because we still have more to look at. But you can kind of see that signal kind of hangs out as we go through the month of February. So yeah, uh, that's not a bad look. You can still get snow in the month of February or maybe later January. We'll see how that trends. However, if we look at the next two weeks, you can clearly see the precipitation deficit here across the Pacific Northwest. Not a great look. You know, January is one of our rainiest months here, and this would be significantly below average. GFS, hot off the presses. Same thing. Here's the U.S. monthly drought outlook here. So we're 
drought removal is likely as we go up coming here and some improvement here across western Montana as well, which has some pretty severe drought going on, an exceptional drought, in fact. But this January is not going to help with that here. So uh, we may be looking at a little bit of a change in heart of the forecast there. But you can see right now, I mean, Oregon is largely drought free. So is Washington, except for some portions of the Cascades there. Idaho and Montana not doing quite as well. And then we're going to have this big precipitation deficit coming up here also. So, yeah, who knows how that's going to go. But anyway, this is the latest here from the drought monitor. Um. Otherwise, what else? I guess we'll just continue to check back on a daily basis. Things can still change through the extended forecast, so keep checking back on a daily basis. We'll talk about, you know, what the pattern looks like as far as La Nina and El Nino. And on the flip side of things here, El Nino is more of a subtropical jet stream that gets a bit closer and races across North of Hawaiian Islands, and it usually floods a lot of uh, North America with some warmer than normal air. So again, it does resemble La Nina, but the ridging right now is still too close. But that sometimes happens with La Nina. And sometimes what happens is as we go through the later portion of the winter and on in through spring, we back that ridging up and then we end up with maybe a shot of snow in February. And then again, maybe some cooler than normal conditions as we go on in through March and April as La Nina loves to linger on in towards the spring months here across the Pacific Northwest. So anyway, hope you guys are having a good day. Otherwise, we'll break this all down again tomorrow and I will talk to you guys then.